Got a set of past exam questions here on the halogens topic. It's the first set of questions I've got. I'm going to do another one, at least another one. Uh, but anyway, the link to the questions is in the description of the video. So if you want to have a go, click on the link, have a go at the questions, and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so question one's test now knowledge of a couple of group trends. We've got a group two trend here and a group seven trend here. So the correct row, well, let's think about the highest pH when added to water. So when you take a group two oxide, so I'm just calling it MO, group two oxide with water makes the group two hydroxide. That's obviously an alkali. So the trend is that the alkalinity increases as you go down the group, and that's because these get more soluble. So in other words, the pH will increase as you go down the group. So the barium oxide is the one furthest down the group. So it's got to be one of these. And then most reactive halogen, well, reactivity of the halogens decreases as you go down the group. So obviously fluorine's the most reactive halogen. So therefore, row C is the right answer. Number two, which halogen most readily forms the one minus ion? So it's obviously it's the best electron acceptor. It's going to be the one with the smallest atomic radius, the least shielding, and the greatest nuclear attraction for the electron. Obviously it's C, fluorine. Moving on to number three now, so it's a classic question of comparing the boiling points of a couple of halogens. So you can see chlorine's got a lower boiling point than bromine. I've got to explain why. Uh, it's got nothing to do with the strength of the covalent bond between the atoms. So many times I stress that, nothing to do with that bond strength, and yet students still write it. So if you think about bromine, it's a simple covalent molecule. So in a sample of bromine, you've got individual bromine molecules um, sort of connected or uh, attracted to each other by these very weak uh, induced dipole in the molecular forces. And the strength of these is linked to the number of electrons in the molecule. Obviously, chlorine would be a similar diagram to that. So why is bromine's boiling point higher? Bromine's got more electrons than chlorine. It's got stronger, and we're going to name the type of intermolecular force, induced dipole-dipole forces between the molecules, and so more energy is needed to go overcome them compared to chlorines. Number four, use oxidation numbers to show what's been oxidized and reduced. So you can see above the atoms involved, I've written the oxidation numbers. So manganese starts out at plus four. Both of those oxygens are negative two each, so minus four for the two oxygens. So that's plus four, and it's going down to plus two. So manganese is reduced, its oxidation number decreases, and we'll get the change in from plus four to plus two. The oxidized species is chlorine, it starts at minus one, and it goes up to zero in the element. So chlorine oxidation number increases from minus one to zero. Complete the electron configuration for the manganese atom. So 25 electrons in the atom, so it's that, and you can write 4s2, then 3d5 if you want. That's fine to change those round. The equation for the reaction between um, chlorine and cold dilute uh, alkaline solution to form bleach. Well, bleach is sodium chlorate 1, so the alkaline question is sodium hydroxide. And there's the equation. That equation features later on in the, uh, in, the, in the questions, I'm afraid. Sorry, I've repeated that one. Part D, so chlorine is bubbled through aqueous potassium iodide. A reaction takes place. What would the student observe? There's no mention of organic solvent here, so it's the aqueous colour of um, halogens we're being tested on. If we look at the equation first and then go back to the, to the answer of the first part, so chlorine, more reactive, more powerful oxidising agent than iodine, so it's going to displace the iodide. It's basically taking the electron off there. So chlorine becomes chloride, iodide becomes aqueous iodine, and that's a brown solution, so that's what you would observe. Definition for electronegativity, the ability of an atom to attract a pair of electrons in a covalent bond. Next part, we've got to draw a 3D diagram of the molecule CH2Cl2 using partial charges to indicate polar bonds. So first of all, 3D diagram, well this is going to be a tetrahedron. So we've got that central carbon, and then I would always draw my two solid lines, and then my, my solid wedge, and then my dashed wedge. 
and then just put the atoms on. You can put them anywhere you want, but I've gone for the two hydrogens there and there and the chlorines there and there. Right, so if we refer to this information now that I've highlighted, chlorine's more electronegative than carbon and hydrogen, so that's why the delta minuses are on the chlorines. But we are told that carbon and hydrogen have approximately equal electronegativity values. Because of that, the CH bond is classed as non-polar. So they don't want to see a dipole on this bond. Okay, So the delta plus needs to be on the carbon, not on the hydrogens. Delta plus on the carbon and the delta minuses on the chlorines. Explain why that molecule is polar. So we just need to say that the molecule is not symmetrical. And it's not symmetrical, obviously, because these are different atoms to these. And therefore, the dipoles don't cancel. So there's an overall dipole left on this molecule. Number five, the electron configuration of a bromide ion. So it's got 36 electrons. It's gained an electron. The atom's got 35. So all of that. And again, they can be done either way around. Next one, student adds a small volume of aqueous silver nitrate to an aqueous solution of bromide ion. So obviously you're going to get a precipitation reaction there. You'll get your silver bromide precipitating out, which is cream, a cream precipitate. The student then adds a similar volume of dilute. I've highlighted that, so that's important. Dilute aqueous ammonia to the same test tube. So there's just a reminder of the solubility. Silver bromide is only partially soluble in dilute aqueous ammonia. So therefore, the student would still see the cream precipitate. It would still be there. It won't dissolve. The precipitation equation obviously looks like that. Just remember, you make sure you get your state symbols right. So it's aqueous ions go into a solid precipitate. Final page there. So there's that repeated question. It's asked in a slightly different way. But there's the equation again. Just a reminder that that's your bleach, sodium chloride 1. And the conditions, which were quoted in the other question, Cold dilute sodium hydroxide aqueous. And the final question, we've got different conditions for this reaction. So chlorine reacts with hot concentrated aqueous sodium hydroxide um, and gives this equation. It's still disproportionation. So you can see I've worked out the oxidation numbers of chlorine. Um, so it starts at zero, it goes to negative one in sodium chloride and it goes up to plus five in sodium chlorate five three oxygens minus two each so minus six from that sodium's got a plus one oxidation number so that chlorine's got to be plus five so we've got to say what's meant by disproportionation and show that it's taken place using oxidation numbers so there's the definition disproportionation is where the same atom is oxidized and reduced and then just putting these numbers into words I'm saying chlorine is oxidized from Cl2 to NaClO3 and just qualifying that the oxidation number increases from 0 to plus 5. And then the other process, chlorine is also reduced from Cl2 to NaCl and that's because its oxidation number decreases from 0 to negative 1. So just make sure you get the change in oxidation number. And I would always encourage you do this above the uh, atoms in the in the reaction equation because you're giving the examiner something to go on.